One raven and king salmon. Oh, that's a good one. Or, yeah, we have, or I've raven been, and a whale. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. I think Maybe I'll, I'll do raven before. and a king salmon first so we can laugh. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do raven and a whale because it's from the territory I'm it from. And the, the land yeah. features are still there. <clears throat> Any okay. way you want to take it, it is good. Any way you want it. <laughs> Cut that way, turn the clock. Okay. Gonna cheesh. Hot you are deep to cut you horn. Yat kin ah, yak egg yok satini. Ka ja adusa computer shoot keen. Gunal chi sha in ye sati ye atuna. Ya yak ye. Gunak aya akhani hun ah. Who are ya? John Guke Dich City. Sloknach Adi Yaddi. Ha Sloknach Adi Dutch Han. Ajaya Achsai Kaskoch City. Ha Achsai Dutch Han. Kunach Cake Rock Eh. So go. So to Ahi. Ya ya ki. A de yukzi it ki ye. Ka a de at ko di ya ye. Ya yes. A dutch kasnika ya ha in a kaguch lanik. So I'll introduce Fred White standing here next to me and say thank you to all of you who've come here on foot to join us and everyone coming through the computer on the live stream. Thank you for being with us. Fred is going to tell some mm. stories about Raven's various adventures. And a few notes about Fred. He was raised speaking Hlingit with his grandparents. And they raised him speaking Klingit from when he was a baby. Fred has made major contributions to the um, the way in which Clinkett is written and the published materials that exist documenting Clinkett grammar, conversational speech, and um, major works of Clinkett oral literature represented in um, archival recordings and published texts including especially those told by his grandfather, Frank Dick Sr. of Yakutat. And Fred began working with Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation, as it was at the time in 1984, and that's when he really set to work on laying that foundation for the written and published language texts. And he spent about the past 15 years in Juneau going into the school districts and sharing Git with the kindergarten through 12th grade students. And Fred is also just a great, humorous, fun person to speak and hang out with. So I'll hand the mic over to Fred now and we'll hear about Yes. I was going to chase you for the mic. Uh, my name is Konak in Tlingit. It's a traditional name from, uh, it pertains to the area that I'm from, that I grew up at. It's in, uh, the place is called Dry Bay, It's the Alsac River that comes down through from Canada and then down to the where the Alaska Canadian border is in where the northernmost Tlingit in southeast Alaska. And my name is Kunalak. Translates to that uh, little Kunana among the other Kunana, because they call it Kunalaku, among the, the 
other clans that are in Dry Bay. So, I'm honored to be here today, to talk with you guys and tell you a story, some stories that I've remembered and always remembered, and they seem to be the easiest for me <laughs> to entertain the students in the K through 12 here in Juneau and up in Yakutat before I came down here. Um, I uh, was born into the language. My grandparents both spoke Tlingit. My grandma spoke some Tlingit. I mean, some English. Um, they're both fluent. I can remember my grandfather, all he can speak in English was his initials, CW, Charlie White, <laughs> which was good enough for me. Anyway, um, the one story I want to tell, it's uh, called Raven and the King Salmon. Story starts out with Raven walking along the beach. A lot of his journeys, a lot of his episodes happen along the beach. especially up in that northern area because they were covered by ice only up to a thousand years ago. And uh, he kept seeing this king salmon out there jumping. And uh, boy, he's thinking about it. really would like to get that king salmon. So he's thinking about it. How am I going to get that king salmon? King Salmon just floundering around out there, having a good time. Raven would come into the river. And Raven caught him. Hey, King Salmon! This green rock's saying bad things about you. King Salmon didn't pay attention to him. Coming back and forth, coming back and forth, kind of caught his interest. This green rock is saying bad things about you. You better come in here and check them out. You can come in here and you can hear what, what awful things he's saying for yourself. Salmon's kind of edging his way in closer to the beach. He's looking for a club. Uh huh. I was sitting. I'm in here now. This green rock is saying really bad things. You better get in here. The King Salmon comes in. The King Salmon comes up looking up on the beach. Where is he? The raven grabbed up his club. That's the town. Really proud of himself. He got the nice big dry bay king salmon. Big dark king salmon. Kind of sprinkling out and kind of starting to rain. He brought it up the beach on the gravel. He made a place for it where he's going to bake the salmon. Cleared the rock, made a nice little fire bed for it. Goodness. 
grandchildren flew down. They all come down there to see, what's up, pops? Uh, I caught a king salmon. I'm fixing to cook it. But we need some skunk cabbage. So, see, see, Landed there. Kawai, uh, it's Kaish and the blue jay and the little teeny bird and Shuk, little robin. They all sat there. Kawai, 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 Skum Cabbage, Kawai. We sent them up there. Yutiayu, Shashuki, Deneya, Atke Kisani. You guys were up there and pulled some of that skunk cabbage from up there. Should be fresh. Gone, they were gone, gone. It's starting to rain, rain. King Salmon's busy, I mean, Raven's busy in himself, building the fire, setting the fire. He had some uh, skunk cabbage already set aside. He was already ready for the baking the King Salmon. He was wrapping up the King Salmon. Laid it down in the fire where the fire pit is. on Kausikan. The coach, the gun went on. They lit the fire. The Kwasa, the Yana Inua, a Kawitsu had to wait to the Shankayan. The Katas has what they took. Kunakit eight ten years, Jenna, as they ate a hoa, a Sausia with skunk cabbage. They all gathered it. They had a hard time bringing it down, plus it's raining out and they're all shivering cold and wet. And uh, Raven was with, oh, where did you guys get this? Oh, we just got it from over there. Oh, wow. Oh, my grandma goes to the toilet there. You need to go somewhere else. <laughs> so they said, oh, shucks. <laughs> They took off. You got to do what Grandpa says. They took off best they can. Guys, don't be lazy. Go up there and uh, get me some skunk cabbage. They see the fire, but they didn't pay attention to it. They're too disappointed, and they disappointed their Grandpa. So they all went out trucking off. Aka we yende ya na i no wa ye wu ya aka aswo a ti ya we tsetsu. Tsetsu sani. It's been a while since the birds were gone, and uh, King Sam is cooking, it's cooking well. It's, they even put a lot of wood on there on top of the skunk cabbage, and you could smell it roasting. And then he says, ah, it should be ready by now. I'm hungry. But that was in here was skunk cabbage. He took off all the skunk cabbage. This is making me hungry, taking the skunk cabbage off. He takes it all off. And I was sick. I was sick. I was his belly was almost as big as mine. He ate the whole king salmon. And, uh, oh, that's the way I actually cut the edge. You were actually just Kusani, Hateas, not Hateas, the Nagok. Ha, just where a shy ewe at teen. I was shot where my ta shy. Only thing left was the king salmon's head. They grabbed it. Shoved it under the end of the rock there. Ah, had to go out way to the Chenkeyan. They all came with more skunk cabbage. Oh, man. Bad news, the Akjiu. Told them I've got some bad news. 
this big rock rolled over on top of the keen salmon, and I can't, I can't seem to get it off of there. So they're, they're all upset. They're all soaking wet. And Kaishk is yakking, and the blue jays yakking, and blah, 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 making all kinds of noise. Wait, that's such a good on hunt hunt the walk. Wait, that's to the walk in and in. Katusha. Uchak on a name. That little white Tweety bird is getting black circles under his eye from rubbing it in the soot from the fire and rubbing it on his head. Let him rub some more water off of his head. Wish you, wish you, so, shook. I wake on, hunt away, hun. Robin came right up and he's standing right up next to the fire with his big chest hanging out. Ah. So it does. Talk well, good. The Kanyakuni. What's the word? The Kanyakuni, yeah. Did she have a quest? Robin asked him, Wow, your chest is all red. What did you do? Get too close to the fire? Robin, oh, I did. So, Kakwashki, and that's it. The little black bird is still up there next to the fire, next down there by the bottom of the coals. He's getting soot all over him, and he's still rubbing his eyes and his head. This little white bird and magpie. Wait, wants to do his sock. Wait, seeking, seeking, seeking. Who called? Ah, yat koko gut. Shaktuka uche yat. By saying, I'm getting out of here. This ain't good. This ain't no good news for me. I'm not, I'm not going to listen to this. Akawa, we, 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 that's how that little Tweety bird got the black head and the black circles under his eye. Asai, kuna kasai kwa kat kasai wakak. I really forgot the name of that white bird. So I'm calling him just a little bird. It's way, uh, Robin Tsuweshu, Kanya Hotiwut. Whole chest and his stomach is all red from standing so close to the fire. That's how Robin got his red, red breast. Blue Making all kinds of rattling noise over there, making a fuss. Ah, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, we call That's why yes, shot was shot. It is a car was ten hours shot. Let's go get good yachts. Yeah, I can take the horn. That's why Blue Jay. Yeah, okay. So Blue Jay's got that uh, spiked hairdo. <laughs> Raven grabbed him, held him there. You're gonna stay here with us. Make by a It's again next Ah, the Yahweh Dehwa, ah, Kakwagut. You're not Kakwagut. How a Kayan coat leads with the tail claw. Raven stepped on the magpie's tail. He was trying to walk away, get away. So his tail got stretched longer. That's how magpie's tail got longer. That he was getting away. Aka weza na jiwanak yech. Sa te wasi yung ko kai ya. At wasiku wasi yung ko sa kai. We tetle no a ka dako a hich. I have no. I don't know what to say to you guys. I'm really sorry, but this big rock just rolled over on top of the king salmon. What's left is the head. All the gold, just 
Tell you another story too, but it's uh, Raven and the Whale. Up there in Dry Bay, there's a place called Bear Island. That's where uh, Raven's at. And uh, I went to Yanagudi. The beaches, we got like 60 miles of sandy beaches up to Yakutat, this side of Hubbard Glacier, where we commercial fish and all of that. And, He's down there in the Elsac River. You can see this whale out there spewing. Oh, well, it's tin. Now you two are tent. thinking about it, wondering, oh, you know what's inside that hole there? That's a pretty big whale. Oh, what's that? Yeah, well, it's tin. Well, it's tin. Well, it's tin. He flew right into the whale. This is just like home. This is huge in here. That's right, the shoot out the ark. Right in the middle of the stomach in there inside the whale. He shoot out the ark. He built himself a fire. And the flames from the whole fire he built is getting bigger and bigger, and all the fats dripping inside there. I went to shook and with the and with the ta. Raven laid back down there, and the fats dripping in his mouth. He's looking around inside the uh, whale and see what he can cut loose from in there. He's cutting parts off the whale inside there and roasting them on the fire, eating them up. That's still dripping out of his mouth. He opens his mouth and enjoying his food that he's finding in there. He's cooking up just about everything inside that whale. He went over, he cut the heart out of the whale. That's what they have a hawk on cook. Our hawk. 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 Our Oh, my, I'm gonna get myself out of this one. He packs the drum on his back. He takes his drum and starts singing. Oh, hey, 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 h
whale drifted in there and went right up into the sandy beach and got stuck up there and beached there. Now, so yik so yik the way han wasuksha yik the cake was cake was skeet. He doesn't have any idea how he's going to get out of this whale now. But he hears some people outside. You got to a tank. Everyone was told in that little village that there's a whale that just floated up on the beach over there. They are on to it. All the muktak and everything, all the bone, all the meat, all sectioned up. Jesus, yes, now I deal with take a tea, make a car way on a good to Kate Heating. Jesus, that's a Michelle. He's almost there. You can hear everybody over there. Having a good time. They're cutting up all that food. They haven't had that good of food in a while. Magawa Jesu. Adeyas na adeyawa. The man and his dog were just about walking over there and raving away. David's listening. You can hear them out there. Just right when he was putting his ear up there to listen to what they were saying there, a knife blade came down through there. How do kana how do a hash? Somebody cut him cut him open. Kana how is kau te ken? Ha ha kane 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 kane. Yeah, we do a hash kinde. Kun 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 kun. Yeah, we do a hash. The kinde we do kain. We are on a good car, a way to Kate. a man and a little dog that were walking there, they uh, turned to stone. Where the Elsac River makes a curve from where we commercial fish at, up three miles up the river. Glacier, but there's a little peak there. The rocks keep crumbling and falling down. He wiped his beak on there to get all the fat off of him. I went to Yawusiko. Then at the Waha, the Danish would see me, cleaned himself up, and he went down there and come landed down the beach away from them people and come walking up to them. Hey, what's the other in the skit? It's all the commotion over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't with the hush. I have to talk to a hush. This rape, this whale is drifted up on the beach here. And uh, cutting it all up and getting ready to pack up for food. This gay can connect. Jesus, I try hard to work out. You tell me. Equity are two years when he, yeah, has to hunt with the hush. A huge could have shoe with he, as our ha, way I. A nakle has shoe with he, as our ha. He told the people that uh, where he came walking from, they just had the same episode. A whale had floated to the beach there where they were, and um, it wasn't good for him. They ate that meat, and it made him really sick. Some of the people passed away from it because there was something wrong with that whale. saying, wow, man, after all this work, they even told him, best if you guys just leave the whale. Work here, chopping it up and cutting it up for food. Guys, 
just leave it here. You don't want it, you want it to happen to you like happened to the other people. They all, almost half of them all died from eating that whale meat. Waitley is a jiwanak. Waitley, akas wu'at. Everybody left. Just the eighth of the <laughs> Raven's the only one there. All the meat's all stacked up in piles. He laid down, sat down against the big pile, sitting there back against it. Started eating some of the meat that he got, that he got from them that they cut up. So I think Raven filled himself up again. He got himself another big pile of food for just making up another story, <laughs> feeding himself. And uh, he had all that whale meat. People left him, except for the man that turned to stone and his dog. And today on that Dry Bay and, and the Alsac River there. They call it uh, Bear Island. But there's a uh, um, features right today. You see the trees where they've grown. And it looks like a, it looks like a whale if you look at the tree formation. They're actually alder. The trees you see around here with the big branch, not the big evergreen trees, but the alder with the big leaves. You can see the formation looks just like a whale. And then there's a dog in front of them. So they're they're still there. They turned to stone. Away I to look at the HOS of Waha. Raven ate up all the whale there and left again on another journey. So to this day, you can still go to um, Dry Bay on the Alsac River and you can see that um, rock formation of the man. It's probably 50 feet up there, it's a big square like this room. Standing there and then next, next to him is a dog formation, like it's laying there and it's four, four legs. You can actually go under his stomach and up on top of his head where it's actually like a little bed up there where the bear's been sleeping. <laughs> you climb up there. Well, yeah, way in Kautia, that's what happened with uh, Raven. Again, and the cheese play him. Okay, gunachish, gunak, for those two stories. We can now take questions from the audience, if there are any. And um, I think I forgot to brief you on this, Fred, but we're going to be posing questions to you. Oh, um, <laughs> gunachish, I thought you were going to feed us now. And if you would like to ask a question, please just raise your hand so I can bring the mic over. Thank you, Fred. Uh, two questions from your stories. Um, one is, um, like the um, recipe for uh, um, cooking salmon with um, skunk cabbage, um, do you fillet and, um, and how you wrap? So that's question one. The other is um, the story of the whale. Um, I, I don't associate uh, whaling with uh, clinket. Uh, culture, and um, I'm wondering if there is any tradition, it's just not one that I'm familiar with at all, or is it simply, um, as the story would suggest, um, perhaps even taboo to be thinking about whale meat because of the likelihood of, uh, of sickness, if that might be the punchline in a way of this story in terms of health tradition. 
on the whale part, I haven't, um, there were quite a bit of whale, whaling going on here in the, in the last century. Um, there were a lot of ships coming in here and doing the whaling. But um, I don't remember us eating any of it. You know, like the muktuk, like they do up north, where they go for the bowhead whale. Or the whales that come around here, but I've never seen or heard of anyone eating them. Is that what the question was? And yeah. in in uh, think yeah. culture? Yeah. White uh, um, um, whalers, mostly, I, I think, initially from New England, but that was uh, when we had whaling here as as late as the 1930s, I think. Um, but uh, never associated with Clinket culture. That's uh, I'm just wanting to confirm that if that was the case. But you answered my question, I think. And yeah, there were a lot. There are a lot of whaling canneries and going on around here and stuff, but um, I think when they were whaling, it was probably during the summer because there's no way they can whale around here the way the weather is here. And during that time, I think most of us, I think of people, um, we didn't take our, our salmon directly from the salt water. We waited for the salmon to go into the freshwater stream and go up as far as they can until the fat content has gone down on it. It's changed to a different color, that so they will dehydrate fast faster. They'll dry as hard as a board. That's how they they stored them, kept them. So there's nobody around the villages when they're doing the whaling and all that. And then the that, second question is uh, <laughs> helping me prepare uh, uh, the salmon. The salmon, yes. Um, that there is filleting it out. I would have put the head in there first. <laughs> That's the first thing you eat. The bellies, the bellies got, um, I seen a cake pan, you know, about a 13 by 11 cake pan. My grandpa would take uh, the two belly parts, cut out strips about two inches wide, and the oil would be that deep in there. And that's what he lived on. I think that's what he lived on until he was 96. And I think um, chewing Copenhagen is probably what messed up his insides. <laughs> but he was 96 years old, you know. Tough old guy, and I can still hear him to this day, you know, when he's eating that uh, king salmon, all that, all that oil. But yeah, and the, um, the rest of it in the skunk cabbage and, and all that, too, I guess you, you can do it right there when it's fresh, roll it up, fillet it out, roll it up in the um, skunk cabbage and put the coals over it and let it cook like that. Very fine meal. Hot court as Gunnar's cheese after a sequoia yachs a kaye, Connahoe coatly art and reish kalniki. Cheese Katsu a two yak it's a yak a tiny a kahu. I was just saying, I, I was thanking him for the stories and um, and how nice it is to see him and how really wonderful his, how uh, interestingly he told that story. How can I show Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I've heard different versions of the same story. I was wondering where these particular stories were coming from. Region? Kluknachari. Kluknachari. <laughs> the Raven Co. clan. See, that's where Raven, up there between um, Latuya Bay and Yakutat, that's why there's no sand. The mountains are way back there. And it's all just bare sand. When uh, Raven opened the box of daylight, everything just went boosh off the face of the earth. So, I remember, I know the mountains are way back there because I spent the night in, in 
in the ocean, and we were going to swim to Mount St. Elias, which was right up in front of us in the dark. And when I started getting daylight, it was 600 miles that way. <laughs> and we were going to swim to it, and the beach was just from here to the tour the whole night. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the Tluknukhari, the Raven Coho clan, um, which were married to the Kaguantan uh, from Sitka, and between Sitka and Kunahu and Dry Bay and Latuya Bay, you know, back and forth, you know, a matrilineal clan. So, you know, whether it's Kaguantan, you're Kaguantan. If you're Tluknukhari, you're Tluknukhari. That's the way I was raised there. So um, I, don't, I remember one thing my grandfather told me that uh, we don't have a story where the um, Tluknukhari came from. They were, they just, they were just there. You know, as all these stories start, you know, start being told. And there's a lot of land features there in the uh, Elsac River and Dry Bay. I think the story I could have told her before in the beginning was the one about um, the salmon box, how we all got salmon. Uh, that was about, um, there was a salmon box way out there. It's called Digging Our Hit. There was all kinds of salmon out there jumping in. And uh, Raven pulled that in. And um, to this day, there are big sand dunes, huge, because this whole building to the the water, two big sand dunes from his footprints. And um, he used anything he could get to make a rope to pull it in. Even the little Tweety Bird, he used the tendon. My grandpa said that tendon must have been as strong as that lylon we have today. That nylon, lylon rope? <laughs> nylon rope? <laughs> we don't have, we call it lylon. So that's interesting. So those sand dunes are still there today. That whale formation, the man and the, um, the dog formation is still there. And sanding, sand, as far as you can see. And Akatat's becoming a surfing little town. <laughs> Hey, Fred, I have a question that's coming from the people tuning in through the internet. Oh. And this is a question, first of all, wondering, do you have any of your own stories published anywhere? And then are there some stories that you can't share publicly? Because um, they write, I know working with John Reese, I have Sim Xian stories I can't share publicly. So is there, do you have any thoughts on sort of the property What was the last word you right? said before publicly? Can't share oh, you publicly. you can't share publicly? Yeah. It may have something, it may have something to do with the, um, the clan moving, moving on. An incident had happened. And so a name was, came from that. They named that place for that event. And there's stories. Maybe that's what he's talking about. But a lot of the Raven stories are, I still can't, um, no. a lot of, there's a lot more Raven stories. Right now, I think they've worked on a book that's got about, about that thick. It's got how many stories in there. Well, we, we are working on putting the finishing touches on this, and in fact, we cut the whole corpus in half, and it's still going to be that thick, and there's 50 stories in it. <laughs> One of the major elements of it is going to be your grandfather, Nakishan. Thick. Two huge, um, well, huge in the terms of the amount of language that's crammed into two 30-minute recordings that are 12 stories told in perfect sequential order and they're all interconnected. Like first he uh, 
first he has his bout with his uncle, and then he goes and releases the daylight, and then he does this, and then he does that. Um, this makes me think, too, of a question I wanted to ask you, Fred. Um, when you were telling the story, you sound, in just the little intricacies, like when you say, Aqawetsa, to move from one scene to the next, maybe, you sound a lot like Nakishan when he's telling stories. So it seems like maybe these little tidbits of language that help move the, the process of the narration along have just, you've picked them up and they've settled into your mind or something. But I was just wondering how you Eesh. actually experience the process of telling the story. Like when you, it seemed like you would pause and maybe picture what's coming next. Like how does how does the story actually come about when you're composing it live like this in your own mind? Well, it's from list. It's from when I started working with uh, Richard Nord, all the books that we have published on Raven stories and the thing in our culture. Um, they're the stories that I memorized because I had to listen to the tape or the recording over and over and over and over get the right, to make sure that it was done right, that the right sounds were all there. So, and it's been a while since I've been out in, into the public, in the, into the school. You know, we, I've been busy. Um, so I haven't been telling stories in a, in, in a few months. <coughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a transitional way of telling, you know, going on to the next phase of the story, saying I'm making a comment like that. Well, do we have maybe one more question? And if not, maybe we'll give Gunak a big round of applause. Gunak, cheesh. <laughs> Gunak, cheesh, Johan. Gunak, cheesh is... Uh, Thank you. Can you all say good as cheesh? Cheesh. Cheesh. Means I love you. Exihan. Exihan. Good as cheesh. I love you too. I used to do this.